local news, at least some sports codes have finally realised Australians are totally sick of being bullied into backing Labor's voice to Parliament. The AFL has now announced no, it's not going to promote the voice during the grand final coverage two weeks before we vote. And that's despite being one of the many sporting codes, including the NRL, which the Prime Minister signed up back in May to support his voice when it was looking popular, of course. In fact, the Sydney Morning Herald reports that top government figures privately said, told it back then they expected the AFL and NRL to push the voice on the millions of people watching their grand finals. Well, joining me is Sky News presenter James McPherson with The Late Debate here on Sky at 10pm and Evelyn Ray, writer and commentator. Uh, Evelyn, an interesting call by the a AFL. Uh, maybe it's finally got smart. I'd like to think that people have clued on, but I wonder, Andrew, whether it, they pulled out because they realised that they can't mute the booing from the crowd during a live TV broadcast <laughs> to the entire country. Uh, that's the real question here. But look, I think most of us are really tired of the politics. We're tired of the division. We are tired of the burdens that we carry in life. We just want to sit down for an hour or so, switch off the brain and experience that lost skill of enjoying ourselves without being guilted into backing whatever current thing our overlords are peddling. I think in sports, we're divided by teams right. and we don't want to be divided by politics either. Please, like, please, can we just James, allow people... James, I think Evelyn's right. I think there's going to be a booing if they did try that, but the NRL hasn't yet made a call. I think it'd probably be the same. But the point there is that the Yes campaign is spending $400,000 of advertising at NRL finals game to push the voice. And I wonder whether Evelyn's uh, thing, you know, uh, point might be uh, actualised there that that could backfire with booing. Yeah, well, I mean, the Yes campaign are within their rights to spend money on advertising just as anyone else can. But I think they might be putting $400,000 down the toilet because advertising during the NRL yeah. grand final is not going to convince no voters to change their minds, but it just may well annoy undecided voters enough to make them think, you know what, I'm sick of this being pushed on me. I'm going to vote no just to spite you all. They'd be better saving their money for later in the campaign rather than ruining people's grand final day. Except there's no later in the campaign. It's only two weeks after that that we vote. I think the timing, at least the, after the AFL one, and I think the timing might have been deliberate by Albanese counting on yeah. uh, the grand finals being a stage. It's not going to work. I think you're both right. A definition of a rock star. Well, look, I just think the rock star definition has been completely rewritten by the Rolling Stones. You know, it used to be that image of, you know, angry young punks sticking it up to the old and all that. Well, Mick Jagger is now 80. And the surviving members of the band have now recorded yet another album 18 years after their last one. Have a look. Angry is the first single from our that new album called Hackney Diamonds, which is why we're in Hackney. We went from hit and run, smash and grab, and somehow between that... I like those. ..we came up with Hackney Diamonds. It's like when you get your windscreen broken uh, on Saturday night in Hackney, all around. <laughs> and, uh, and all the bits go on the street. Yeah. I didn't really have much idea what they were talking about, but I just love the, uh, the uh, you know, London accents. What do the Stones represent now, do you think, Evelyn? I think they represent an era in where rock and roll rebelled against the system. And whereas today, I think musicians are part of the system. But I just want to say this, recording an album is one thing, but performing a 90 minute set in your 80s, not in the confines of a nursing home, that's the real feat here. I mean, those guys are the real rock and roll. I think what's really appealing to them and, and to all of this is not only the nostalgia of good music, but the nostalgia of good time that that music was created. I think some of the first casualties of wokeness are truth, beauty and creativity. And I think these guys capture those things that we so desperately want back. We're all desperate to relive anything but the woke realities of 2023. And these guys kind of are paving the way for that for us. James, I'm hoping that I can do a, a jump like I saw Mick Jagger <laughs> do then uh, when he's 80 uh, at that age. Uh, what, what do you make of it all? 
Well, I'd tune in to watch that jump, Andrew. But um, in 1962, <laughs> when the Rolling Stones started, they were the bad boys of rock and roll. Now they're the bad geriatrics of rock and roll. i got to admit, <laughs> I like the song and I, I love the video clip. I mean, you've got these 80-year-old guys obsessing over a half-naked blonde who's young enough to be their great-granddaughter. Someone said to me, what does that mean? I said, it means they're alive. I think what this proves is that uh, music is intergenerational. So parents pass on their musical tastes to their kids. And so what you'll have with the Rolling Stones is young adults being driven to the concerts by their grandparents who don't drop them off and come back later. Uh, Nana and Pa stay for the show. <laughs> I think you're both right. James and Ferson, Evelyn Ray, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.